Welcome back to Pinoy Crossover. Filipinos talking about ba basketball. I'm looking extra light right now. I just wanted <laughs> to point that out. But let's talk Very about patient. not light topics. These are top, these are moves that might shake up the NBA. So let's start off with the big trade that just happened. Well, Porzingis. Yes. Is not a Nick anymore. <laughs> Where is he? Is he so, on the bench still? Is he, is he? He's injured, obviously, still. But it's a big trade. So let's see what your opinions are on him pairing up with the rookie sensation. Mark, you first. Well, like, I think it was uh, it was a very quick decision, but it was it, it came in after the uh, the talks that um, Porzingis had with the upper management in New York. After they had the talks in terms of him planning to resign or playing long term with the he said that where the organization is going or how they're handling uh, the team, he didn't see that this was something that he wanted to be a part of, and he, of course, had a trade straight away. So for them to get something in return all of a sudden because of his injury, it's a pretty big and risky move for uh, Dallas to kind of take it on because you don't know how it's going to be like when he comes back from his ACL injury. Mm -hmm. right? A lot of his game is based on his quickness and athleticism. So with an ACL injury, we don't know what, how, it's, uh, how long it's going to take him to be at full strength or to be at his um, peak when he was playing. So that's a pretty risky move for Dallas, but it was also a good strategy for them because mm. this is basically their chance to tank the season, get a really good high pick, and mm -hmm. pair Doncic with Porzingis and another cat, you know, another player that's coming into the draft, which is a very deep draft. And I, I think mean, they have two two first rounds, mm -hmm. right? That they, they recently one of their, got. They're not, yeah, one of their pick they, they lost uh, because of that trade with mm -hmm. uh, Atlanta to get Doncic. Yeah. So it's protected at some point. So they just have to be in a certain position and they can keep their pick. Mm -hmm. But it's a, it's a good strategy for um, it's a good strategy for Dallas. And mm -hmm. I mean, Mark Cuban probably wanted to take that risk to mm -hmm. pair. Uh, Doncic with a superstar like Porzingis, and uh, and then it puts them in a good position mm -hmm. in the draft just to be able to get a player yeah. again to pair Doncic with, right? Because they know Doncic is going to be there for a long time. He's going to be their superstar. He's going to be their franchise player. Why not add another franchise player in, this, in, in the team? Don? And he's a unicorn. Like he, you don't know what he's going <laughs> to be. He's a special type he's of player. Basically, like so, imagine you know Doncic having to play with a guy like Dirk, but then with more athleticism, the, yeah. right? And a that's, younger that's Dirk. what Porzingis can do. Yeah, yeah. And he can learn from. Yeah. And he can learn from Dirk yeah. as well. Yeah. Exactly. So let's talk about let's look up, let's talk about Chris Tapp's potential. Like when yeah. you look at Chris Tapp's, like what's his what's his I guess what's dangerous about him that makes him so uh -huh. good. Well, he's just very athletic. Mm. Uh, mm. Sky's the limit for him. But the only question is what could happen because he just had an ACL surgery. Mm. And with that trade, it's very ironic because um, Knicks took Frank instead, instead of Dennis Smith Jr. And they they could have had Dennis Smith Jr. Yeah, yeah. They don't need to trade for Singus. <laughs> but now they traded for Singus for Dennis Smith Jr. when they could have had him in that <laughs> draft. Pick. It goes to show how yeah. horrible their yeah. decisions making the right? it, it doesn't and then I feel bad for DeAndre because right after Clippers he went straight to Mavs because mm -hmm. they, he felt like he owned he owns um uh Mavs, mm -hmm. you know. So I think it's just very ironic and I think um with um Przingis is going to Mavs. Yeah. That could help his career with um, Dirk Nowitzki. Yeah. And Luka is not a selfish player. Yeah. He's basically like, for me, I think Luka is a, like a baby LeBron. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He has that yeah. potential. Yeah, he has that potential. Yeah. Both of them ha is basically sky's the limit for yeah. both of them. I think both so. are tanking the season too. So yeah. if you think about it, they trade yeah. each other. Przingis goes there. They yeah. tank. They won't have any good players to really back up yeah. uh, Luka Doncic. They're yeah. just going to keep losing games. And then on the New York side, they're gonna get a guy like DeAndre, yeah. but then the rest of their teams kind of sucks too. So then they're all going <laughs> they're for all they're all going for Zion Williams. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. here it is: who's yeah. gonna get Zion Williams? Yeah. Who's gonna get that pick? That's yeah. what they're trying to do. But it's also a win-win because obviously, like a lot of expiring contracts too. Once mm -hmm. the trade yeah. happens, so New York, York up cap. so New York, yeah, the free it's cap, gonna be and a then crazy everyone's gonna New York, attack. New York's the plan season. is to get Zion yeah. and then have a, uh, enough cap to, to sign, sign a big something. free agent like yeah. Kevin, the yeah. Kevin Durant, the Iron Kawhi Leonard. They can offer them that much money. So that's what they did. Get a, you know, a promising start yeah. this coming yeah. draft and then have enough cash space to offer a player uh, like of caliber of a superstar yeah. like Durant or Clay. So two big moves from those mm -hmm. organizations. But mm -hmm. let's talk about a big guy yeah. that requested a definite <laughs> trade. He said he wanted the Lakers. Yeah. So let's talk about Anthony Davis. James, what do you think about this Anthony Davis, I guess, uh, all these talks the man, in yeah. the NBA? Yeah. It just... You know, a lot of people trying to, uh, I mean, a lot of teams trying to offer 
um, Anthony Davis, even uh, Raptors. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I think Raptors should not go for Anthony Davis because you're basically ha having two rentals mm -hmm. in one team. That's mm -hmm. very, that's scary. Yeah. That, that could, um, when the season starts next year, you could have no superstar in the team mm -hmm. and no draft pick. So that's really risky to do. But some people say that you should go for it because Raptors never been to the promised land, mm -hmm. like I said last yeah. episode. But um, yeah, so for the Lakers, I think they some people want to offer basically the whole, <laughs> yeah, the yeah. whole future. Get rid future. of everything besides uh, yeah. LeBron. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm like, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Like, what teams can offer, or where do you see Anthony Davis fitting in? But it's it's about the New Orleans. They don't want to release him either, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. what teams are the destination for Anthony Davis, or yeah. that are fighting hard for him? With it, with a player of of Davis caliber, it's not so much fitting in. It's so much so who can uh, who can accommodate his talents and who can surround him with the best talent to help him win mm -hmm. because. He already he already was clear in terms of a statement. Uh, he doesn't care about the money, which is good to see in players. I mean, uh, it's good to see that players nowadays does not care more about the money, but more of their legacy. Whether they can win a championship, whether they can make it to the finals, whether they can um, they can really carry a team and have a team surrounded, be surrounded by players uh, from the upper management, from a franchise, from a team that can help them have a, you know a successful career. I think a lot of players are doing that nowadays, which is mm -hmm. good to see because back yeah. in the day, more people are caring more about the money, staying yeah. in one team, even though the team does not care about you. you know, the same kind of story. I think he listened to what Kevin Garnett went to with, with the Minnesota Timberwolves, yeah. where he was so loyal to the team yeah. to the point that they, he wasn't getting enough support, he wasn't getting enough build from the franchise, but he stayed loyal to them. And that's when he really got a success, when he decided to actually yeah. get you know, to get traded to the Boston. So I think he and a lot of people are learning nowadays, young players are learning from the past legends and saying, yeah. hey, I want my legacy to be about winning, not about mm -hmm. putting up empty stats in a yeah. team that did not Basically. do what it's supposed to do in terms of putting enough talent to him, surrounding him with the players that he needs to be successful. Mm -hmm. So for him, he said, I got he took a look at the season and say, I don't have, you know, you did not surround me with the players that I need. I've been here for yeah. seven years, mm -hmm. and my stats, even though I'm putting yeah, You see a lot of everything. those happening in a lot. NBA players. Oh, yeah. DeMarcus yeah. Cousin, Walker. yeah, Kemba yeah. Walker, yeah. DeMarcus Cousin went through the same thing. I hope Carl Anthony Towns does not go through that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of good players. I mean, Porzingis yeah. was too, but yeah. he's still kind of young. But yeah. Davis was there for seven years. Kemba was there for a long yeah. time too. And so these kind of players, we, you know, they, they care more about their legacy, and it's good to see that Davis. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, if he goes to the Lakers, that's a good opportunity for him mm -hmm. to compete. And if he the, doesn't go to the Lakers, what team, what team do you think has the enough package, like a package, a compelling yeah. package for him to come? Oh, I want to save it for the next push because I okay. think the Raptors should no. <laughs> go for it. 